thank you for that. And it's time now for our community segment here today. So we've got Mary O'Connell joining us for Check Call. And Mary, today we are talking about something that I am incredibly passionate about, and that is health and wellness in the office space. And it's something that I think is, again, one of those not one size fits all approaches, but it's a topic that is really, really important, especially because we live in such a high pressure, high stress world like the freight industry. Absolutely. So that's something that, you know, I figured, why not touch on? I know it's not, you know, cool TMSs and like digital freight matching or other things like that, but it's also something that is really, really, really important because obviously, you know, a healthy, a healthy office staff, especially heading into, you know, the throes of winter where more often than not, you're going to have employees getting into work before the sun's up and leaving before or after the sun has set. So definitely striking that balance you know, maintaining some exercise, doing anything like that, just kind of having a slightly healthier workplace is it's only going to benefit everyone. Also, you know, it it never hurts health insurance premium to, you know, be a little healthier at at work. But so we actually dive into that a lot today. And um, it's it's just really fascinating to know some of the um, and to learn some of the things that like you can do at your desk that you're sitting there, maybe to make your ankles stronger, help improve your core, help improve your posture, just little things like that, that you're still working, you don't have to, you know, take a stretch break for 10 minutes, which I mean, obviously, you probably should take a little stretch break, get up, walk around, move a little bit. But um it's you get like there's just things that you can do like you know fixing your posture act like engaging your core when you're sitting and it's going to help with like your back problems and just overall make you a little bit stronger and it's something that you can do literally while you're on the phone talking to a carrier i mean i can only imagine how difficult it can be if you're working on the east coast but you have clients that are on the west coast you're waking up early can you talk to some of the things that really kind of start to go on that almost kind of build on top of each other you get into sleep deprived state the next thing you know you're drinking coffee first thing in the morning then maybe a monster by 10 o'clock then maybe a second one by two o'clock and how all this really kind of leads into maybe like a waterfall effect of snowballing out of control Well, there's always going to be, or at least um, places where I've worked, there's always the on-call phone, like the person that they have to answer the phone at 2 a.m. if it rings. That way, you know, individual brokers aren't getting called um, and everyone's waking up at 2 a.m. There's just that one person that for a week or a couple of days, they might hold that kind of emergency phone that if something happens, you know, obviously the brokerage is still reachable from a shipper or a carrier or anything like that. So that person usually doesn't sleep very well that week sometimes you get lucky and you don't have any problems but sometimes you have a driver calls you at 2 a.m saying i can't get into the guard shack what do i do and you're like well it's it's, it's 2 a.m the, the guard shack's probably closed um so you're gonna have that person and so that means you know you're a little sleep deprived you're gonna need to come in and uh you know drink a couple extra coffees that day you might not be having that much energy um to maybe go go to the gym or go work out or go kind of do that thing that you need to um you know keep your mind right and keep your body right because contrary to popular belief or maybe it's not popular belief but working out and exercise actually does help with you know your mental health and maybe some of the seasonal depression that usually happens this time of year so just kind of staying on top of it and knowing that okay this is going to happen maybe you know i shouldn't sit here and eat 700 pounds of candy in the afternoon and go for my fourth monster or my fourth energy drink of the day and maybe just go outside for 10 minutes in the cold and get a nice face full of cold air to help wake you up or just kind of move a little bit instead of just you know reach for something sugary which there's no there's no problem with that it's just you know everything's good in moderation So, Mary, of course, the new year is often a lot of time where people make their resolutions, right? And I would say the majority of resolutions focus on something health and wellness focused. And typically, they're individual. They are very specific to yourself. But I think that it's also a good time if you are a manager or a leader in your business to maybe do some reflection and make some resolutions to help support your staff. Because a lot of this comes down to a culture change, right? It comes down to a top-down approach to say, hey, I, as a manager, am going to work a lot harder at prioritizing my staff's health and wellness because that turns over into productivity. So what are some steps that you think managers can take to really let their employees know that health and wellness is a top priority and that can start that kind of culture change where they understand like, you know what, you might be losing two or three or four cold calls a day, but you are a happier, more productive employee because you got up to go for a 10 minute walk. 
I think it just kind of comes down to sitting down and having those expectations. Like if you have people on your team that maybe want to go work out at lunch, you know, making sure that they get that lunch break or they get that, uh, you know, that hour long lunch break and that they don't, they're not caught up in working through lunch. I think that's a great approach. I really think that it comes down to knowing your team and knowing what their own personal goals are and whether that's something that you sit down and talk to them um, or even just come up with something realistic because everyone's going to have different things and some people might be like oh well maybe I just want to snack less okay well if that's the case we'll take some of the snacks out of the break room or swap them for like fruit instead of you know packages of M&Ms or something like that so just doing some of those easy swaps and knowing what people want and what their individual goals are so if you have that, you know, just fostering that and also, you know, don't make it an environment where if someone truly is not having a good day and maybe they feel like, you know, they're kind of wasting their time at work or they don't feel very productive at work, you know, offer them that mental health day, offer them um, the ability to work from home for a day or two a week because sometimes you're fine. It's just, it's one of those days where you just get up and it's really hard to get dressed and go to work. So making like kind of not necessarily accommodating them, but making it easier for them to get through the work day is not a problem. I mean, it, we're all humans. We're all, we're not robots. We have feelings. And, um, I think it really just comes down to knowing your team and knowing how to best, uh, make them successful. And that can start literally by something as simple as having a conversation, just ask them what, what's going on. What are some of your goals for the year? What can we do to help you and make it better? And whether that's, you know, carving out a designated lunchtime or making sure that you leave the office at a certain time so you can go home. I think those are some really easy steps to take. I think you're spot on with that when the chaos of just caffeine, zen, and just <laughs> sleep deprivedness just all start to add up together. It can be a lot, so having that support system goes a long way. Mary, for your upcoming show, what can we expect and when can we expect to see it? We'll just keep watching Freight Waves uh, right here on YouTube, and you can expect a new episode of Check Call today at 1230. We really kind of dive into this, and um, it's a really fun episode. And then also, uh, we have a newsletter that comes out today at 2. And then if, you know, you're not sure uh, if Check Call is right for you, a good thing that we have a bunch of old episodes on YouTube that you can watch as well. And I highly recommend watching them. They're fun. All right, Mary, thank you for joining us today, and we always appreciate the insight. Thanks, guys.